So the school suspects an emotional disability and they talk to you, the parents, and say that they're suspecting it and they start the evaluation process. And they do the evaluations, they come back to the table to review the evaluations. Did they share the evaluation form with you beforehand? Did you even know there was a form that they're supposed to complete? And it's not only for emotional disabilities. For every disability code, there's actually forms and checklists that you have to follow that the school is supposed to go through. I'll tell you, I have done I, hundreds of IEP meetings and it's rare that the school actually goes through the form like they're supposed to. And even still, it's even rarer that the school sends the parents the forms in advance. How can you fully prepare for an IEP meeting if you don't know what criteria the school is looking at? So for emotional disability, at least in Montgomery County Public Schools, they have a form. You're supposed to go through the form and on the form is very specific information. You have to do your cognitive data. What's the IQ? Where is he functioning? Achievement data, achievement data. What level is he functioning on, your child functioning on in reading, math, writing, and any other data that they might have, which could be a functional behavior assessment and behavior intervention plan and data collected there. Then they're supposed to go through techniques employed, record reviews, staff consultations, interview with you, the parents, behavior rating scales, and again, functional behavior assessments. Next, there's the characteristics that they go through. And it says that a prerequisite to finding that a student has a, an emotional disability under IDEA, the school psychologist must first find evidence of an emotional disability, an emotional con condition exists that exhibits one or more of the following characteristics. So over a long period of time and to a marked degree. So this is the psychologist's point. There are five questions that they have to go through and the psychologist is the one that signs off on this. And that's an inability to learn that cannot be explained by intellectual, sensory or health factors, an inability to build and or maintain satisfactory interpersonal relationships, inappropriate to types of behavior or feelings in normal circumstances, general pervasive mood of unhappiness, or a tendency to develop physical symptoms and fears associated with school, uh, school or personal problems. This is what the school, sort of the psychologist certifies. And then the team looks at all of the criteria to go through the adverse educational impact. So once you find there's a disability, there needs to be an adverse educational impact. I'm going to put the link to the form below because I'm not going to sit here and read a form to you. You guys are all adults for the most part and can read. So there'll be a link to the form below for you to see what you're looking at and what you should be discussing and looking for. And stay tuned, hit subscribe because I will be doing videos on all the other areas of disability. I hope you enjoyed watching.